Okay, so you do an awful lot of work as a voiceover artist. Yes. Would you say that's probably where you make th- is the steadiest part of your income? Um, it can be, and but yes, it, it definitely can be. Can be. It's it's. You can make quite good money doing voiceover, um, but it takes work to put into it. So it's not. A lot of people go and go around saying, "Oh, it's easy money." It's not. It's, it's really, it's really not. Um, I get quite a lot of work from it, but that's through regular clients, through people I do, I work with. I do a lot of uh, corporate narrations, okay. um, explainer videos, e-learning videos. Yeah. I'm doing. Uh, I'm in the middle of doing an audio book at the moment. Okay. Um, a new, a new biography. Um, I've just finished another bunch of audio books. So there's lots of different bits and pieces. Uh, lots of different styles of work but actually it takes a while to build it it's taken a long time to build it up as a reputation or as a skill or both both okay both. how when did you realize that your what came first a realization that you had a vocal quality that sold well or was it just a desire to be a voiceover artist did um, somebody ever say you've got a great voice? For no, me. I got pulled in. I got pulled in quite a bit. I start. I fell into it from doing video games. I was doing some motion capture work in video games, okay. some um, fight work. Yeah, and I and I was working with the director, and they needed a voice for the project, so they pulled me into the studio. Um, I did a whole series. Of, I did a whole series of voices for a couple of characters, and then off the back of that he pulled me in again and said oh can you do these bits and then there was more and more and I kind of found I enjoyed it and actually I was quite good at it yeah yeah um but it's it's an acting skill it's it's completely an acting skill so, so how, how how important do you think because you do have a very distinct voice and you've got a really great voice and it's not it's, the first time you've heard that <laughs> no no but it, it works but that's but I know also I know how to market that now right, now right, I do that's taken right. me years to work do you but, play on that? You don't, sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say, but you, the, the voice thing—you don't necessarily have to have the most amazing voice. It's just about knowing what quality you have and how to use that. Right. So being able to play on your it's strength. That, it's that thing again, isn't it? There's no one in the world that's better at being you than, than you. you. And yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. And, and know yourself a mu- mm. horrible work. Market that, mm. uh, as it were. Okay. Yeah. So how long have you been doing voiceover work? I know you started off doing the computer games. The computer games stuff was probably 10, 12 years ago. Because you've set up your own business and you've got your own website. Yeah. Mm. Link at the end of the video or in the description below. Um, you have Maybe. you have set up your own website and actually you get a lot of corporate clients yeah, coming to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, we used to live together and yeah. you used to have a lot of people get in touch with you and it would be, can you quickly just throw this voiceover together? Mm-hmm. It's just a small snippet. You don't have these little half an hour jobs that you do. It's, and I mean, yeah, it's a lot. A lot of it. A lot of it actually, a lot of it kind of stems from uh, from 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 having from different skills. So so from years ago, from playing in the band and being a musician, I spent a lot of time in studios. So I got to know how to work software, how, 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 software and hardware, and I got to know the the ins and outs of uh, acoustics and the ins and outs of recording. So so actually, then the idea of actually once I decided to put those two things together and actually have my own studio and record myself at home using the technology that is available mm-hmm. to everybody. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, it didn't take a lot. So, so it's important for us, so I, I would imagine, particularly as a voiceover artist, you have a, a, a voice reel. So as actors, we have mm-hmm. show reels, mm-hmm. um, where when we put in a show reel together, normally that will be a body of work that we've already done. Yeah. More frequently now, there are companies that will film little scenes mm-hmm. for you so that you have a body of evidence through show casting. Mm-hmm director what you can do um when you then have to put a voice reel together because you it's that catch 22 isn't it you can't get the work unless you've got the voice reel yeah. but then you can't get the voice reel unless you've got the work so what happened there's, you there's, there's companies out there that will put it together for you and is that Same what thing. you did or what i did the first time i had i had a lot of i had a lot of material from from jobs that i've done but when i decided i was going to take it seriously i decided to go to someone in the industry who knew the industry well and get them to put a voice role together for me. Um, I mean, it was typical. I, I went and did it and I quickly learned that the first, first person I went to what didn't know the industry that well and actually didn't produce a very good product to me ah, at all. okay. But to be and honest... That's a risk in this industry. That well, sometimes... yeah, yeah, but you know what? But at the same time, it's all part of the learning process for me as well. Because through that, I got to learn what worked and what didn't. And that's 
really sometimes the most important, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Then, work as opposed so to eventually, I knew, yeah, so then I learned quite quickly. Well, I mean, having said that, it still it still did the job. It paid itself back, but but that but now I look back on that and I look back on the original the original reel I ever had made and I come the quality is horrendous. Yeah, but I look at back to my first headshot, my first show reel, and I think exactly the same thing. Yeah. Right? It's that kind of like, oh god, did I ever? Oh, yeah, I was a bit embarrassed about. But, well, it's, it's yeah, but even the technical side as well. Oh, okay. So what? what you know, but but having said that, now there's there's yeah, it, there's there's people out there. There's lots of people out there who you can go to who will who will produce these things for you. And I mean, the important thing is just to, is to you can go and get something made, get a voice or a made, and throw it out there. It doesn't mean you're going to infinitely just get work. No. Um, you need to know what your niche is. You need to know where to put yourself and. And actually, how to refine that reel? Because essentially, if you just spout off a load of stuff, thinking your voice is gonna, you know, just doing what you hear on the radio or you hear a, a, a commercial on TV mm. and just replicate them, mm -hmm. it's probably not going to be your best work. But what would you say to somebody who's good at doing some character voices or some different accents and things like that? Would you say that they would be good things to put in a voice reel or would you say it would be more important to actually stick with your natural vocal quality? If you're gonna, if you're really good at voices and you're really good at accents and you're gonna do it, you need to be amazing. Right. Because there's people out there who, who are amazing. Okay. okay. And if you're not amazing and you're just slightly okay at it, either become amazing or focus on a niche, focus on something. That would be my advice. Okay. Um, I mean, there's there's people out there's uh, there's genuine. You just need to look on YouTube at some of the. There's a, there's a good friend of mine who does um, sixty characters, sixty accents in something like four minutes or something. Okay. And uh, he's a, he's a he's a he's a friend of mine, the voiceover artist. And I mean, he literally reels through sixty accents in four minutes or something stupid, and they are absolutely amazing. So if you can beat that. Go, go go and do it. But I'm not I'm not I'm not saying everyone has to. But I'm saying is what I mean is that's his thing. Yeah. Everyone has to have their thing. See, I've got a friend who's very YouTube good at doing voices, voices yeah. and accents, and he's got a similar thing, mm. except he has to tell you the name of each character that he's doing before he does it. So it's the key. So so yeah. So so it's that thing. It's, yeah. it's the key to get to have the thing. But it's also I think there's a little bit of like, in case you didn't know who this was, <laughs> this is who I'm doing now. It's like oh, that kind of defeats the yeah. purpose of doing, a, doing an impression. Show, really. Really. If there's somebody sat at home now watching this, going, do you know what? I'd love to be a voiceover artist. How do I know whether I would ever be a voiceover artist? See, there's a bit of something I could do. There's a bit of me that kind of goes, yeah, but actually, no. Okay, so what makes a bad voiceover artist? It takes, it does take training and understanding. I mean, by simply going to drama school, you get 90% of the training you need for yeah. the job. Yeah, yeah. Um, and is that in terms of sort of depth of voice and knowing how there's, there's quality, the instrument there's, works? There's qualities, yeah. It's about understanding the voice. It's, it's simple things about being easy to work with. If you're not easy to work with, you're not going to work very well. Because they're in not going to hire you back. You mean in terms of taking direction? Yeah, in terms of taking direction. You go into a studio, you sit down, you have, you have, I don't know, you haven't seen Toast of London, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's yeah. that, it's yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you have your clients, you have the guys on one side of the glass, you have your engineers, you have you sitting there. And the clients can be as ambiguous in their direction mm -hmm. as is humanly possible. You, I mean, some of the pieces, some of the bits of direction I've, I've had in the past, you kind of, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you need, you need we'll to be, be judged on our performance, but yeah. they won't necessarily be judged on the direction oh, no, they've no, given they're, us. They're, <laughs> no, they're, they're not getting judged. You're the one getting judged, but yeah. you have to produce the work from their direction. Yeah. So if they're being really ambiguous and they're not giving you anything, you need to be able to try and find a way to draw it out of them okay. or decipher what they mean. Okay, so that's in terms of asking questions and getting them to but be also, more specific yeah, yeah. or... And then, but then having the ability to be able to turn that into a vocal performance. Mm -hmm. So that takes practice and it does. It's, it's, it's technical, it's, it's, an acting, it's an acting thing, it's a vocal thing, it's a technical thing, um, and they're simple. Th I mean, it is, it is something you can learn, yeah. but, but just to answer the question, no, I don't think anyone could be a, vo a voice of artist, but just the same way that not anyone could be a pilot or not anyone could be a minor. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay, I guess that's fair enough. So there is a, a, an element of, as there is with being an actor, 
uh, taking direction, taking ownership of that direction, but portraying it in a way that's true to yeah. you. Well, it's just you take 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 the take the words and make them live. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. essentially what you're doing. You're taking a script and you are making it live in a way that makes it sound like you're not reading it, even when you are. I mean, one one of the one of the lovely things about voiceover I love is that you don't have to learn your lines. <laughs> and that for me, oh, that for yeah. and that for me as a lazy actor is brilliant. I yeah. love that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's all yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you you have to you have to read it. You have to understand it. You have to know what, exactly what you're saying. You still have to do all the work on the text. Just not that bit about just not retaining. That, just not that bit about but retaining it all the way. Think about being an actor. But, but, God, sorry. No, I was going to say, but it's but you still but you have to make that live in the same way. You have to be able to bring it off the page, and you have to be able to make it sound like even if it's actually the harder the text, the drier the text, the the worse the subject matter, the more boring the subject matter, the harder it is. I, I was the voice for Greek incontinence pants. Oh, that's one point a couple of years ago. I mean, I mean, we're talking really niche markets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not that interesting a subject, no. but you have to be able to take this and be able to present it as an interesting subject. It's an acting exercise. That's all it is. Yeah. Okay. okay. By the way, that's not the only thing I was the voice of, but it was just an, as, as an example. It's uh, typecast now. That's yeah, it forever. Yeah, that's You're going to be playing continent man. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I'm global. I can do it. Global. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you had any advice, somebody sat at home now thinking, do you know what? I would love. I've seen people on TV. I've seen. You know, um, Jim Carrey go into a studio and play these huge characters. Mm. It looks like the most fun job in the world, mm. and I, I would love to do it. What advice would you have for that person who's never done anything in their lives? You may never have done any voiceover work, or you know, but they're like, do you know what? It's, it's something I really like to do. It's never been easier. Get on the internet, do some research, and go and have a play. Do, go play, and I think is go the key, and have a play. It? Go and do. Don't don't go in and go. I'm gonna make this work. Go and give it a try. Do you need to go and buy a load of equipment? To no, don't, don't buy anything. Don't buy anything. What, just just use go an and, iPhone. No, no, but go and have a go and have a play. I mean, go and try it somewhere. There, there, there's, there's, there's. If you wanted to try motion capture, there's, there's companies that do motion capture taster things. If right, you want to, okay. if you want to voiceover, just start doing some research. There's a lot of groups out there. It's, it's not free. To get into no because voice reels cost money your equipment costs money yeah marketing costs money yeah um and there is an outlay with all of this of so it's not it's not something that's that's free um so just go and give it a go i, I read it in a paper twice okay i'm gonna Google, Google it, yeah, yeah. and There's, let me know if it's true because I will, I will edit know. that out. Of this yeah, it's not. It's not true. It shouldn't go in the video. No, it really <laughs> should not. It really should.